Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today's episode is going to be a $50 deck tech. When I say $50, I mean that is an overall deck cost. Both shipping and commanders that are $10 or less are going to be included in that cost, but basic lands will not be. Decks on this channel are built to be fun, inexpensive, and focused. If you want to learn more about what a focused commander deck is, check out this video here. On this deck tech, I'm going to take you through its strategy, the tactics, and how this deck wins. This show and episodes like this one are possible because of viewers like you. So if you're looking for some easy ways to help support the show, make sure you like this episode and share it with friends. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Thank you to everyone who's already purchased our merchandise, it really does help support the channel. Another easy way to support this channel is by using our TCG Player affiliate links. So make sure that you're looking for those links in the description whenever you're buying a deck or just individual cards. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support. Today's commander is Atla Palani Nest Tender. She is a 2-3 human shaman that costs 1 red, green, white. By paying 2 and tapping her, you create a 0-1 green egg creature token with Defender. And then whenever an egg you control dies, reveal cards in the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So essentially she kind of has a polymorph-like effect in Naya. She can create eggs and when one of those eggs dies, you get a creature for free. Now, like I mentioned in my quick take, there are plenty of different directions that you can take this commander. You can focus on getting giant creatures off the top of your library like Eldrazi or Dinosaur or dragons. But I think an even more powerful build is Egg Tribal. By sacrificing an egg, we can get another egg which we can then sacrifice. We can keep chaining this until eventually we hit a combo. Now there aren't too many actual egg creatures, but that's really not going to be a problem for us. But I'll go through that as well as the combo in this deck tech. Overall, Atla Palani seems like a very powerful and unique commander to build around. Currently her price is quite high, but I expect that to drop as soon as C19 comes out. But since at the time of this recording her cost is over $10, this is going to be a commander excluded episode. So our strategy for this deck is very simple, we just need to get a free sacrifice outlet, our commander, and two eggs onto the battlefield. Our library is going to be full of eggs, so chances are when we sacrifice one, we get another one. So how do we win? Well, we're going to combo off with our eggs to ping our opponents to death. Once we're set up properly, we can chain from egg to egg to egg until we hit our combo. And this combo can be pretty hard for opponents to actually stop once we get going. As with all Commander's Quarters decks, I'm going to take you through 10 different tactics that show you how the deck works and how we're going to win with it. So let's start off with tactic number one, prep the ingredients. First up there's Wayfarer's Bobble, which we can pay two and tap and sacrifice it to search our library for a basic land and put into play tapped. Next up there's Rampant Growth and Edge of Autumn, both of which can get us a basic land and put into play tapped. Now Edge of Autumn can only do this if we have four or fewer lands, but that's no big deal for this deck. And on top of that, if we want to cycle it, we can just sacrifice one of our lands. Next up we're going to be running each of the Signets, both of which we can pay one into them and they tap for their guild's colors. And finally we're running each of the Talismans, which can either tap for our colorless or tap for one of two colors, but they deal one damage to us. With this deck we want to combo off as quickly as possible. So the cheaper our ramp is, the better. But in order for us to combo, there's a crucial first piece that we need. Let's go over that in tactic number two, crack some eggs. First up, we're going to be running Fanatical Devotion and Martyr's Cause, both of which are free sacrifice outlets. Like I mentioned before, in order to combo, we have to have an outlet that is free. We're going to be sacrificing far too many creatures to have to pay mana for them. And we really don't care what the sacrifice outlet actually does, but these can be helpful. Fanatical Devotion says sacrifice a creature, regenerate target creature. And Martyr's Cause says sacrifice a creature the next time a source of your choice would deal damage to any target this turn, prevent that damage. So both of these can actually save our commander in the right situation. Next up there's Demon Mail Halberk, which is not your typical sacrifice outlet. It's an equipment and its equip cost is to sacrifice a creature. We can only equip at sorcery speed, so this sacrifice outlet is somewhat limited. But with this deck, we want as many free sacrifice outlets as we can, so we'll have to make do. Another somewhat limited outlet is Life Chisel. It says sacrifice a creature, you gain life equal to the sacrifice creature's toughness, activate this ability only during your upkeep. So this does limit us to combo off only during our upkeep, but that's fine. Our combo can work at any time, so we're not going to be too picky. Next up there's Spawning Pit, which is an outlet without a restriction. It says sacrifice a creature, put a charge counter on Spawning Pit. And then by paying one and removing two charge counters from it, we can put a 2-2 colorless spawn artifact creature token onto the battlefield. Now most of the time that's going to be pretty irrelevant, but you never know. Another outlet that makes tokens is Tooth and Claw. By sacrificing two creatures, you get to create a 3-1 token. Now that two creature requirement isn't really that big of a deal. We'll get into it later, but I really recommend that you start off with two eggs on the board before you try to combo. So you'll have two creatures to sacrifice with this anyways. Next up is one of our best outlets with Goblin Bombardment. It says sacrifice a creature, Goblin Bombardment deals one damage to any target. So on top of this being a free sacrifice outlet, it's also a win condition for us. If we can sacrifice an infinite amount of creatures, we can ping down all of our opponents. In my opinion, this card is very close, but not quite good enough to be the Golden Pig. The Golden Pig is going to be the number one card out of our 
card 99. And the golden pick for this deck is Altar of Dementia. It's an artifact that costs 2 and it says sacrifice a creature. Target player puts a number of cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power from the top of their library into their graveyard. So much like Goblin Bombardment, this is a sacrifice outlet and a win condition. Once we're comboing off, we can mill out all of our opponents at once. And there are also some circumstances where we might want to mill ourselves a bit too. We've got some ways to get some creatures back from our graveyard, but we'll get into that later. Just know that overall this outlet does everything that we want it to do. And on top of that, it's cheap and easy for us to cast. We can get it out really early to set ourselves up to combo off right away. It checks all the boxes that we need to check, and that's why it's the Golden Pig. But there are only so many free sacrifice outlets out there. So how are we going to make sure that we get at least one of them? So let's find some ways in tactic number three, search the pantry. Now, Naya doesn't exactly have the best affordable non-creature tutors, so we're going to have to make do with what we can get. First up, we're going to be running Open the Armory. For just two minutes, it lets us tutor for an equipment. Although this can only get one of our sacrifice outlets, that's all we need to win. So we're also going to be running Plea for Guidance. It says, search your library for up to two enchantment cards, reveal them, and put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. So with this, we can go get two of our best enchantment sacrifice outlets. And finally, we've got Skyship Weatherlight and Ring of Three Wishes. When Skyship Weatherlight enters the battlefield, you search your library for any number of artifact and or creature cards and exile them, then shuffle your library. Then by paying for and tapping it, you choose a card at random that was exiled with Skyship Weatherlight and it goes into your hand. So essentially for a total of 8 mana, it lets you tutor for any of your artifacts. And then Ring of Three Wishes is somewhat similar. It's going to come into play with 3 wish counters on it. If you pay 5 and tap it and remove a wish counter from it, you get to search your library for a card and put it into your hand. So again, essentially for 10 mana total, you can go get any card from your library. Again, these tutors might not be the best, but they give us another shot at getting a sacrifice outlet. But outside of tutors, we've got some more ways to dig for those outlets. So now it's time to move on to tactic number four, handling eggs. First up, there's Harmonize, which is going to draw us three cards. Again, the deeper we dig into our deck, the better. And while card advantage is great, we don't necessarily need it. We care a lot more about card selection, so we're also going to be running a card like Cathartic Reunion. To cast it, we have to discard two cards, but we get to draw three. If discarding those two cards gets us closer to a sacrifice outlet, it's worth it. So we're also going to be running cards like Shattered Perception, Collected Defiance, and Fateful Showdown. Essentially, each of them are going to make us discard our hand and then draw that many cards. Again, card advantage is not something that we care about in this stack. Since we're trying to combo off, we don't care about outvaluing our opponents over time. So if we don't have an outlet or a tutor in our hand, hopefully we can draw into one. Next up, we're running Heartwarming Redemption and Corpass Fury. Each of them make us discard all the cards in our hand that we draw that many cards plus one. Now the former is going to gain us some life and the latter is going to deal damage, but again, that doesn't really matter for this stack. We really just care about digging deeper to get to that combo piece. So finally, we've got Magus to the Wheel. By paying one in red and tapping and sacrificing it, we can make each player discard their hand and draw seven cards. So hopefully one of those seven cards is an outlet. So once we get those outlets and we get them onto the board, what do we sacrifice with them? Let's go through some of our options now in tactic number five, Batch of Eggs. First up, we're going to be running Rock Egg, Dragon Egg, and Ruck Egg. Each of these pretty much do the exact same thing for this deck. They're eggs, and when they die, they create a token. Now, unfortunately for us, those tokens aren't actually eggs. But if we're comboing correctly, we actually don't need those tokens anyways. If need be, you could probably create an infinite number of them, but we'll get to that later. Next up, there's Summoner's Egg, which, like Rock Egg, was errated to be an egg. It has imprint. When it enters the battlefield, you may exile a card from your hand face down. And then when it dies, you can turn the exiled card face up. If it's a creature card, put it onto the battlefield under your control. So this egg can actually be very effective in this deck. With our commander in play, essentially when this dies, this can get us two creatures. And the more eggs that we have to sacrifice, the better. Finally, let's take a look at Gamekeeper, which actually isn't an egg. But for this deck's purposes, it's pretty much the exact same thing as an egg. When it dies, you can exile it, and if you do, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. That card goes onto the battlefield, and the other cards go into your graveyard. Now, we don't have any other creatures like Gamekeeper, but we do have some other creatures that are technically eggs. And with this deck, we need as many eggs as we possibly can get. So it's time to move on to tactic number six, Egg Substitute. First up, there's Universal Automaton, which isn't an egg, but it does have Changeling. Changeling means that this card is every creature type at all times. So for all intents and purposes, any creature that has Changeling is an egg. When they die, our commander's going to trigger just the same. We are literally running as many Changelings as we possibly can. Again, we'll discuss why later, but the more eggs that we have in this deck, the better. For the most part, we don't actually care what our Changelings do. Pretty much, we're just going to sacrifice them as soon as they come into play. So I just organized most of these by converted mana cost, and we're going to go through them quickly. At 2 mana, we've got Woodland Changeling, Imposter the Six Pride, and Firebelly Changeling. At 3 mana, we've got Avian Changeling, Torian Mauler, and Mere Entity. Now, in some builds, Mere Entity can actually be a combo piece, but that's not the way that this deck is built. Next up at 4 mana, we've got Changeling Sentinel, War Spike Changeling, and Chameleon Colossus. And then at 5 mana, we've got Game Trail Changeling and Web Weaver Changeling. And Valiant Changeling technically costs 7, but can cost as low as 2. Next up, we've got Changeling Berserker, Changeling Hero, and Changeling Titan, which each have Champion a Creature. So we actually can just sacrifice these without an outlet. And finally, the best of our Changelings is probably a regular Cohort. When it comes into play, we get a 2-2 Shapeshifter token with Changeling. Again, the more eggs that we have to sacrifice, the better. But why exactly is that? 
It's time to go over our combo in tactic number 7, Scrambled Eggs. So the combo for this deck revolves around Karmic Guide and Revelark. It's a pretty straightforward combo, but let's break it down. When Karmic Guide comes into play, we get to return target creature cards from our graveyard to the battlefield. And when Revelark leaves the battlefield, we return up to two target creature cards with power two or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. So essentially, both of these creatures can bring each other back from the graveyard. If Revelark is in our graveyard, Karmic Guide can bring it back when it comes into play. And if Karmic Guide's in our graveyard, we can sacrifice Revelark to bring back Karmic Guide and something else with power two or less. We can essentially just loop this as many times as we want. So if we have have an egg or a changeling in our graveyard with power two or less, we can just keep bringing that back. And by sacrificing that egg, we're going to get more eggs with our commander. And that's where the next part of our combo comes in with Lava Belly Sliver. It says sliver creatures you control have. When this creature enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to target player or planeswalker and you gain one life. Now we aren't running any other slivers in this deck, but we do have changelings, which on top of being eggs, they're also slivers. So with Lava Belly Sliver on the field, we can keep looping Revelark with one of our changelings to kill all of our opponents. But if we just need one changeling with power two or less, why are we running a ton of eggs? The answer is simply chance. The more eggs that we run, the less chance that we have of hitting a non-egg early. Let's say, for example, that we just have one token egg that we created with our commander. If we sacrifice it and hit one of these three creatures, our combo fizzles. The more eggs that we run, the higher percentage chance we have of hitting other eggs. If possible, we want to start off with two eggs, one of them being a non-token creature. Because when we sacrifice that egg and hit Karmic Guide, we can still get that egg right back. And if its power is two or less, we can get it back with Revelark too. Now, there are other creatures that do work in place of Lava Belly Sliver. The reason that I chose Lava Belly Sliver is that it can gain you life and it's got only two power. So before you combo, incidental life gain isn't a bad thing. And since it only has two power, Revelark can bring it back if it dies. But but if possible, we want to make sure that we can protect our combo in the first place. Let's go through some ways to do that in tactic number 8, Hard Shell. First up, there's Face Shield, which gives target permanent we control protection from the color of our choice until end of turn. So if one of our opponents tries to remove one of our combo pieces, we can protect it. Next up, there's Autumn's Veil, which says spells you control can't be countered by blue or black spells this turn, and creatures you control can't be the targets of blue or black spells this turn. So this gives our spells some protection, as well as our creatures some protection too. And finally, we're running Regrowth, just in case we lose one of our combo pieces. Now we've talked about protecting our things, but what about dealing with our opponent's stuff? So it's time to move on to tactic number 9, Wipe It Away. First up, there's Return to Nature, which is a very flexible card. It says, choose one, destroy target artifact, destroy target enchantment, or exile target card from a graveyard. Next up, we're running Generous Gift, which can destroy any permanent, but its controller gets a 3-3 green elf and creature token. Since we're working a combo quickly, we really don't care about that token. And finally, there's Oblation, which says, the owner of target non-land permanent shuffles it into their library, then draws two cards. So this can help us deal with one of our opponent's things, or can actually draw us two cards if we want to get rid of one of our own. Again, the main part about us getting set up is to get one of our sacrifice outlets, and this can help us dig deeper to find them. But what if we're not quick enough and our opponent's up a board state. Let's go through some ways to deal with that in tactic number 10, cleaning up. First up, there's Solar Blaze, which says, each creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. So this is a board wipe that can wipe out most creatures while keeping our commander and some of our eggs alive. And then there's Divine Reckoning, which says, each player chooses a creature they control, destroy the rest. Again, this is another great way to clear most of the board while keeping one of our pieces around. And finally, there's Tragic Arrogance, which can be even more impactful. It says, for each player you choose from among the permanents that player controls an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and a planeswalker. Then each player sacrifices all of their non-line permanents they control. Because we can pick and choose, this spell can be absolutely devastating for our opponents. Again, this deck really doesn't care about board states and is just working a combo, so we just need a few pieces to make it work. But now that we've gone through the spells in this deck, let's go on to the mana base. First up, we're running Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse, both of which we can tap and sacrifice to search our library for basic land and put in play tapped. Next up, there's Exotic Orchard, which can tap to add one mana of any color that a land and opponent controls could produce. And then there's Jungle Shrine, which enters the battlefield tapped, but can tap for any of our colors. Next up, there's Lesnia Guildgate, Elfame Palace, Tranquil Expanse, Grey Pelt Refuge, and Blossoming Sands, each which enter the battlefield tapped and tap for either green or white mana. Then there's Boros Guildgate, Stone Quarry, and Windscarred Crag, each which enter the battlefield tapped and tap for either red or white mana. Next up is Gruel Guildgate, Shivan Oasis, Timber Gorge, Rugged Highlands, and Kazandu Refuge, each which enter the battlefield tapped and tap for either red or green mana. And finally, we're running 19 basic lands. Eight of those are going to be a plains, six will be a mountain, and five will be a forest. And now that we've gone through every single card in this deck, let's do a quick price check. A quick reminder that our deck costs are calculated using TCG player optimization, optimizing with even heavily played and damaged cards because those cards need a home too. The average Antla Plani EDH Trek deck will set you back $473.82. Our deck is going to be much more affordable, coming in at $49.46. Again, keep in mind that neither of these costs include the commander, because at the time of this recording, her cost is over $10. Again, the price of this deck is the price that I got for it on the day that I'm recording. If you want to see a breakdown of this deck's cost, check out the link in the description. Keep in mind that prices can and will fluctuate and change over time. But with these deck costs, I want to be as transparent as I possibly can. Again, Commander's Quarters decks are about to be tuned and focused within their budget, but there are always ways that we can improve on them. So let's go through some reasonable upgrades now to see what some of those ways just might be. First up, we're going to be adding in Lightning Greaves and taking out Korvast Fury. Lightning Greaves is a fantastic way to protect our commander and to give her haste too. 
Next up, we're going to be adding an Ashnon's Altar and taking out Faithful Showdown. Ashnon's Altar is another fantastic free sacrifice outlet for this deck. Next up, let's add in Blasting Station and take out Magus of the Wheel. Blasting Station is another sacrifice outlet that can actually just win us the game too. And then we're going to add in Gamble and take out Ring of Three Wishes. Although there's a chance it fails, Gamble is a much more efficiently costed tutor. Next up, let's add in Heroic Intervention and take out Face Shield. Heroic Intervention is just a better way to protect all of our permanents at once. And finally, let's add in Veil of Summer and take out Autumn's Veil. Veil of Summer just does everything that Autumn's Veil does, but better. And with that, our show is coming to a close, but I really want to hear about your thoughts on these picks, so why don't you let me know in the comments below. And make sure that you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Links to our social media accounts can be found in the description. Also in the description below is a link to the Commander's Quarters Patreon page, and I just want to say a quick thank you to the patrons who have subscribed so far. There are many benefits to being a patron for the Commander's Quarters, including being able to vote on future Commanders for deck techs. There's even a general level tier where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. I truly couldn't do this without all of your support, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about budget commander. So while you're at it, go ahead and check out some of our other types of episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again, and have a good one.